In this video, we're talking about mistakes you can make when writing SQL Alchemy. These mistakes lead directly to apps with bad performance that are difficult to maintain. But a list of mistakes is not the only thing you need. What you need is a method for figuring out if you've written suboptimal SQL Alchemy code. So first I'll show you a method for finding issues with your code. And then I'll use that method to show you five mistakes you could be making when you write SQL Alchemy in your Python apps. Okay, so before you can figure out if you're making mistakes, you need a way to clearly see when something is going wrong with the code you wrote. If you don't do this, then you won't know how SQL Alchemy is interacting with your database. All you need to do is go to your engine and set echo equal to true. When you do that, SQL Alchemy will log the SQL statements for you so you can inspect them. So let's take a look. I'll run this and I'll put it in an output.txt. And then looking here, I see all of the statements that were generated, create table and a bunch of inserts because I'm creating the database down here and I am adding a bunch of users and posts. So this information here will allow you to understand better what's going on with SQL Alchemy. So now let's get into the first mistake. Let's start with a common situation. You want to find out how many records there are in a database for a given query. The problem you can run into is loading too much data to get the result. Here's an example of getting the count of all the posts in my database. First, we query for all the posts and then we take the length. Let's run this and take a look at the results in the log. We see it's grabbing all the columns and all the data for all the posts in the database. This is unnecessary if we just want to count. So why does this happen? Well, there's no obvious way to write a count query in SQL Alchemy, so it's easy just to use the Python lin function on the results to get the count you want. The actual solution is to use SQL Alchemy to get the count. So you can import func from SQL Alchemy and then call dot count on it. So let's do that here. Let's remove this statement. And instead what I can do is statement equals select and then funct count. And you can put a star in here. You don't have to put a star if you don't want to, but I'll put a star and then select underscore from post and then run this. But I'm not expecting a bunch of results. I'm expecting one thing. So I'll comment out this result, and then I'll do result equals session dot scalar because I'm expecting one value so not scalars and then statement and then I can print the results so print result and let's use the number of results again here and run it so now we see the database is being asked for just the count instead of all the results from the table. The next mistake comes when you wanna insert a lot of data at once. Maybe you're preparing some data in a one-off script, or maybe you're allowing the user to bulk upload a bunch of data. The first problem is the overhead of creating Python objects that you don't need for anything. The second bigger problem is an insert statement will be generated for each record you wanna insert since they're all being added to the session one by one. Let's take a look. I have some data and I'm looping over to create user objects. Then I add each object to the session and finally I commit at the end. If we look at the log, so let me run this. We see 10 insert statements, one for each user we wanna create. What we don't see is that our script had to work a little harder to first create the Python object, add it to the session, and then save it when all we were doing was creating the same thing over and over. The reason this happens is because each session.add is independent. It doesn't know you wanna add a bunch of related data, so it will generate an insert for each thing you wanna add. To get around this, you can import insert and then add values in the following way. We can start by creating a list. So let's call this new users. And I'll say for i in range one to 10, so the same loop. Instead of doing session.add, I'll just append to new users. So new users append and then I'll pin a dictionary here. So name, and then the name will be the same. It's going to be user and then some number. And then once I have my list of dictionaries that represent the users that I want, so the name key represents all the attributes on the user object, I can then do session.execute. And then I wanna say insert. So I'm using that function that I imported. I'm going to insert users. So insert the user class here. And then I need to pass in the list. So new users, just like that. And then I can call session.commit all the same. So let me comment out the original and run this again. 
And now looking at the outputs, there's only one insert and all the data is going in that one insert. And because we only have one insert instead of 10, it's gonna be much more efficient. For our next mistake, let's think of a time you want to create a query that checks if a column has a null value. In my example schema, let's say we wanna find out all the users who have no last login, meaning they created an account but never logged in. This seems like a simple thing to do, but if you do it incorrectly, you can end up with a hard to discover bug in your project. Here's some code where I'm seemingly checking to see if a column is null. Let's take a look at the logs. So let me run this. Let's take a look at the logs. And we see select and then the columns where zero equals one. So where is the is null in the query? It's just basically querying for all the results where something is false because zero doesn't equal one. This obviously isn't what we want. Well, this happens because you're trying to fit both a Python pattern, so checking for none with is none, and then the SQL pattern where you use is null in your queries. But what actually happens is Python evaluates this code first, so it's always false because user.lastLogin is none is always false. Instead, you have to either use the equal signs or the dot is underscore. So let me show you. So let's copy this. And instead of is none, I can do equal equal signs like this. So let me run it. And then in the output, we see the is null. That's one option. Another option is I can do last login dot is underscore and then pass in none. So this is the same. Run it. And in the output, we get the same thing. So the one you use is preference. If you're used to the is none pattern, then I think this one works a little bit better, the is underscore none, but both work just fine. Next, let's think of a common situation. You want to delete some data in all its children. In my example, you want to remove a user in all its posts. This mistake can lead to exceptions being raised in your code. So let me demonstrate. Here I'm getting a user object and I wanna delete it. So I call session.delete and that should be it, right? Well, no, so let's take a look. So output.text and it looks like I get an exception. So let's take a look at the logs. And in the logs, we see it's generating update statements, but I'm not updating anything. By default, SQL Alchemy won't delete extra data for you when it comes to relationships. This is the safest approach from SQL Alchemy's perspective, but if you have child objects that must have a parent, then updating the child to have parent ID be null means that you have a not null constraint violation. To fix this, you need to change how the cascades are defined on the relationship. If you do cascade all, so cascade all, it will add common features for relationships that you're probably expecting with proper deleting of children as being one of those features. So now when I run the code, I don't get an exception. And let's take a look at the log. We see here, I have a couple of deletes. So one is deleting the posts, so the child record, and then another is deleting the actual user that I want. So this is the functionality that I'm expecting, and of course, there are no exceptions with this. The final mistake occurs when you have some kind of parent objects and you wanna loop through and do something with all the child objects. This mistake can be horrible for your app because things will start off fine, but over time, your app will get slower and slower. And if you make the mistake in one spot, you'll likely make it all over your app so your entire app could have terrible performance. Let me show you. Here's a simple looking example where I get all the posts for a user. Let me run this and look at the log. So uv run 5.py and then I'll put it in the output dot text. So looking at output here, I see a bunch of selects. It looks like there are six of them. Well, no, there are more than six. We see there are a bunch of selects here. So this happens because SQL Alchemy makes relationships lazy by default, meaning it won't load relationship data until it knows you want to use it. The problem here is when you access just one child in the relationship, it loads the data for that one child. If you access another child, it gets the data for that one as well. So it creates a query for each child. The more children, the more queries. To fix this, there are two main approaches. First, we can change the lazy parameter in our code if most times we use this model should preload the relationship. So let's go here to posts, and then we can do lazy equals something. So the lazy that SQL Alchemy recommends is called select in, so I'll use that. And now let me run it. 
and let's take a look. So output, and we see here there are just two selects. So one select for the user, and then another select from posts where the user ID is in something. So this will generate two queries for us, uh, one to select the parent and the one to select all the children. And then the second approach is on a per query basis. So let me go down to my query here. So let me copy this and comment out the old one. So for our query, instead of just selecting user, we need to add a options on here, so dot options. And then in the options, we can do join load. So I'm importing that at the top here, join load. And then I need to tell it which attribute I'm joining on. So in this case, the user posts. So I wanna preload all the user posts. And then let me run this. So there's gonna be a problem here. I run it and we get this error and it's saying I need to call dot unique. So that's pretty simple. I just call dot unique before all. So when I'm using join load, I just have to call dot unique because uh, in SQL there can actually be some duplicates. So dot unique will just remove the duplicates. So dot unique like that. I'll run it again, no errors. And then looking at the logs, now we see there's just one query. So this query has a select and then it has a join and that's enough to get all the data for us. So that covers the five mistakes I wanted to talk about. Have you made any of these five mistakes before making them now? Let me know in the comments. I know I have before because they're so easy to make because most of them come from the SQL Alchemy defaults. There is one more mistake though, and that's not using the latest style and patterns of SQL Alchemy. So if you want to learn how to avoid the mistake of writing old SQL Alchemy code, check out this video.